This one is particularly more specific to botanists. And a quick question for everyone. Has anyone here used Brahms or tried Brahms? You've used it? Okay. okay. Um, Brahms, I'd like to start off by saying this um, presentation was put together by Dennis Feiler at the University of Oxford. He is the brains behind Brahms and the main contact for the project. BROMS is actually an acronym for Botanical Research and Herbarium Management System, and it's a tool designed to do more than just capture specimen data. It's also meant to be a research tool as well. It stores data and images from herbaria, field surveys, botanical gardens, seed banks, literature, anything associated with uh, a research project. It also has a lot of uh, reporting features for checklists and floras and things like that. It's actually pretty widely used now in about 60 countries around the world, especially in tropical and subtropical regions. Uh, I, would th I think Brazil is the um, country with the highest number of projects in it, about um, um, many herbaria. The Amazonian region in particular has been using Brahms to database 100% of their collections. The largest database that uses Brahms is now Naturalis in the Netherlands. And more recently, a few months ago, South Africa came online. The whole Sanbi um, group has adopted Brahms for their botanical um, collections. And globally, seven million specimens around the world are stored in a Brahms database. Brahms is currently up to version seven, and it's freely downloadable at this website. Uh, I can give that out to you later on as well, so you don't have to write it down. But again, you can just download it, install it, and try it out for free. Brahms is made up of a series of pretty much modules to handle each one of these data types, primarily being uh, the backbone of taxa. You can import data sets to store uh, scientific names. <coughs> then there's modules for geographic data, uh, botanical, any sort of botanical records, plant collections, specimens, all types of specimens from herbarium sheets to DNA samples, images for any one of these categories, plot samples if you're doing survey data, uh, if you work at a botanical garden, you might want to do living collections. Many universities also track their living collections, so this is another option for that. Seed banks and a bibliographic data set for literature. So a taxonomic data set here um, is pretty much the centralized, um, as it's the backbone of a Brahms project. This allows for importing, so if you got a data set from IPNI, you could just import that right into Brahms or any other source. And you can in store information at all levels, so you can have a family description or a genus description. And in besides that, it, you can go beyond just full descriptions, the protologue information, any sort of selected references you'd like, synonymy for a taxon, um, conservation coding, anything related to a specimen or a species you can store in Brahms. And really at the heart of Brahms is a reporting tool. So once you've gotten all your information in, you might want to get it out into a variety of different formats so you can publish it directly for a new species description in a monograph or any sort of publication. Botanical records. This module is basically to say, I saw plant X at this location. It could be used then as a foundation to start specimen records, but it could also just be to track observations and nothing more. The specimen module it does full databasing then of all the fields you would want um, for a specimen record. Not only her, uh, just herbarium specimens, but wood samples, uh, leaf collections, DNA, any, um, DNA analyses. And you could have a single record with multiple specimen types, so you might have multiple sheets or a, a sheet and a separate fruit, and these things can all be tracked together in Brahms. And you can have a series of fields, and you can actually add more fields as required. You're not limited to what Brahms comes with. You can actually add on to it, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Botanical surveys. This is actually geared towards many different types, so you could actually be doing just a very small plot survey or a very large um, forest inventory. They are you know, permanent sites, um, long-term research projects and they can be as simple as just recording presence or absence uh, in a location. Or you can have more complex files for um, species IDs, tree numbers, uh, measurements of plants, so height, width, 
um, things like that, voucher references, images, and there are no restrictions. Again, you can add more terms into Brahms as you need. And then you can combine the data with any other sort of uh, research information you may have in the database. In terms of living collections, this is going to give you descriptions of plants in a garden. Again, images, the original source of the material. You may have be planting something from seed that was received from another country. You can track where the living plant collections came from originally. And then the identifications and any managing events. You might uh, have to trim the tree or any sorts of um, garden inventories, things you might do in the future can be tracked in the database. Uh, specifically, the seed bank module was developed in collaboration with the Millennium Seed Bank at the Royal Botanic Gardens Q. So this one stores all the details that that very large project needed. So it's actually a very robust um, tool for managing seed banks. And it's really designed to you know, house everything that's not only at the collection itself, but to do distributions and put information uh, online. Images, you're not restricted to any sorts of um, single images in Brahms, if you have living plant images, SEM images, uh, multiple images, just label data, literature, things from literature, anything can be linked to a specimen or taxon record. Now how does Brahms work? Basically, it's a pretty simple format in some sense in that you can use these very simple rapid data entry files to do most of your work, which actually kind of looks like an Excel spreadsheet. And so you can take uh, a sample of your data set off and go out in the field, enter a lot of information, and then when you come back, you can load it to the main database and it can check against the authority files and things like that and look for errors. So it really is a mobile system. You can actually go out, use it, and bring it back and have it centralized again. And again, you have this main database, um, sort of like what John was talking about in database structures this morning. You have your core database file for what Brahms comes with, but then anything else you might want to add sort of is attached to this main file as a separate data set. And so you can have as many of these extension files for the other pieces of information you need. This is a collections management tool. So if you need to create inventories of your specimens, if you need to produce reports, labels, anything to manage your collection, this is actually a very good tool as well. You can create, um, track loans, you can create online loans. If someone's requested specimens and you can't ship them to them, you can actually digitize them and put them online. And determinations can be returned. So if someone is, is validating that record, they can return a, a determination via a website service. You can do mapping out of Brahms as well. Again, it's going to track your uh, locality information, your, geo your coordinates, and then from there you can export that data to any sort of mapping system you may be using. 